What's the most hilarious thing you have seen at your workplace? I work in a hospital lab, and on a Monday morning I came in and saw this email. To whom it may concern. I had two cupcakes and put them in the core lab break room refrigerator last night on the evening shift and someone ate one of them. The cupcakes were for my dogs and they contained raw meat. If you ate the cupcake and don't feel well, please see a doctor. I don't want you to get sick and end up with E. coli or salmonella. The CEO sends a cryptic email saying he has a big announcement. He's an older dude so people immediately start worrying that he's either announcing his retirement or announcing the sale of the company or something like that. At the time we were having a great year, but people were still freaking out that maybe he sold and now our futures are in jeopardy. Everyone shuffled into the conference room where he's there with a microphone. There's champagne and candy on a table. He goes into this spiel about how it was our best year ever and he couldn't be more proud and he heard the retirement rumors but it won't be anytime soon. So there's 100 people in this room like okay, so. The tension was unreal. Please help yourself to some candy. Also, the executives and I are going on a Caribbean cruise to celebrate. Join me in congratulating them on this great success. What followed was the most tepid, dumbfounded round of applause I have ever heard. I felt like I was on an episode of The Office. The fun-sized MNMS were good though. IT consultant here. I currently work for a demo slash plant hire firm. One of the not so bright yard workers was breaking down some reclaimed materials next to a skip. As he's chopping away with his little axe, he notices a can of expanding foam, brings it towards him and, for some strange reason, he decides to hit it really f hard with the axe. All I heard was a loud bang and a lot of swearing. He walks out from behind the skit, noticeably expanding due to sheer volume of this stuff he had on him. He looked like a very confused, orange marshmallow man. At a funeral I was working, I watched the estranged mother of the deceased try to threaten and intimidate the young widow. Thing is, mom didn't speak English and the widow didn't understand a word of Spanish, so while mom was telling her how she was going to pay for taking her son away from her and from his country and how she'd make her life miserable, the widow was just smiling and nodding. The mom was getting increasingly frustrated, and finally got out something like you, he, meet soon. The wife took it in a very different way, scooped the mom up in a big hug, thanked her for that, and said she loved her too. The mom gave up and stoned off. I managed to keep my face straight long enough to pull the deceased's brother aside and have a word. The brother rolled his eyes and assured me that he'd have his mom on the first plane back to Spain, and I retreated to the prop room for more tissues and an extended fit of giggling. I work in a trendy spot in NYC. We had a new hire, middle-aged relatively husky guy who joined the engineering team. He made a huge fuss about getting to sit on an exercise ball instead of a chair like everyone else in IT obliged. He's had the thing like two days when he's headed back to his desk with a full cup of joe, and he plops himself down on the ball and boom. It explodes and this goober is lying on the ground wailing in a mess of his own making. I work at a company houses too, data centers, and we lease racks out to customers so they can bring in their equipment and we provide the connectivity, cooling, power redundancy, and monitoring. One day an alert pops up on our monitoring platform for one of the customer's server. We're not allowed to do anything so we call the customer and they send one of their techs over. I go to meet him and let him into the data center. He's in there for about three hours. Finally he calls and tells me the job is done and asks if I can escort him out. I go down there and I find this guy next to his rack, completely but naked. He sees me, puts his clothes back on, closes the rack, packs his equipment and tells me to escort him out. I kept a straight face the whole time and I never questioned him. I check out the surveillance camera and as soon as I let him into the data center, he removes his clothing, pulls out his laptop and begins troubleshooting the issue for 3 hours straight and our data centers are cold because of the cooling. I work in a large ER that treats quite a few psychiatric patients. Many of them have lost their sense of social boundaries. I learned this when I saw one of them having sex with their so in the hallway. They were both very large and ignored our stern requests to stop. They were also very loud and quickly became a spectacle as all the other patients looked out of their rooms to see what the commotion was about. I was not about to intervene at all. Security ended up having to separate them. I wish I could have unseen it but it's still a running joke three years later. After services one cold winter day, in the church where I'm organist, there was to be a baptism. The mother noticed steam rising from the baptismal font, the minister had warmed the water so the baby wouldn't cry with cold water. She said, why is that baptismal water steaming? To which the minister replied, oh, it's nothing we boil the hell out of the holy water to be sure the sin is gone. People were still laughing after the baptism as they left church. I work in the Navy. I have a shore command station at a hospital as an IT. Or, well, now K200. When I got here there was a surplus of nerf guns, I didn't know why. But there was a lot of pistols. 
One day a co-worker snuck into our boss shop with a few, maybe three or four, pistols and started shooting up the place like something out of an action movie. He quickly ran away as our chief walked in. From the other room we hear there was a firefight, and then almost immediately our LPO walked in with a nerf gatling and unloaded it on him. She then said don't bring what you can't take sucka. It was a new experience for me, having been there a week. It was pretty hilarious. Not much goes on here that is hilarious. It's a pretty dull environment. But one time I was walking with the boys to lunch and we passed by an empty room. The phone is on speaker and this guy on the phone is just yelling. But nobody was in the room. I found that rather humorous. Here you are going off and ain't nobody in the room. I'm a lunch lady for high school kids and during fourth period, elder church members will come in and mentor struggling kids a few feet away, at the tables. Well, I had just put out some delicious smelling mashed potatoes and chicken and this artsy junior came in and sees the potatoes and yells in a deep voice I am gonna not. And the church members look over at her and I clap my hand over my mouth because I immediately burst into laughter. I love these kids, I really do. I work in a corporate atmosphere in an important industry. That's all I can say. Currently there are inflatable rainbow donkeys hanging by their necks like a noose, suspended from the ceiling. Not sure about context. Edit, no this has nothing to do with being gay or homophobic. Many of our colleagues, directoriates, and managers are gay slash lesbian and we have trans members of staff. They are pride flag rainbow. They're red, green, blue, and purple piñata looking donkeys. Edit, interesting with the Democrats thing, but we are in London, UK. When I worked in retail we did trolley jousting. That was so funny but now in hindsight, also quite dangerous. I am surprised no one was seriously injured considering how many crashes there were. When I worked in a bar, we had a huge fight break out. I went to intervene but three bouncers had already separated it and were desperately trying to keep this massive rugby player type guy from strangling this weedy chaff. I called for reinforcements on the radio system which contacted all bouncers tuned into the pub watch scheme. Within seconds the front door swings open and I am expecting big burly men with SIA badges. Nope. Standing in the doorway, assessing the scene like a bad mother F is, the taxi marshal. He is the weediest guy out of all of them, yet he just straight up legs it and dives into the fight and gets lost in the press of flailing limbs. I will never forget how much my sides hurt after seeing that. I used to work in an egg factory, one day I walked into the washroom to poop and sat down in a stall. I hear an abundance of grunts and splashes from the next stall, sounds like whoever in there is laying some serious cable. He finishes up before me, and I see through the crack in the door that it's my buddy Garrett, who I had gone to Burger King with before the shift. So Garrett washes his hands and leaves while I remain on the stall trying to squeeze out some more feces. Garrett must have really disagreed with those onion rings because not even five minutes later he rushes right back into the stall, plops down, rips the loudest, wettest, nastiest fart ever, and proceeds to continue shooting his guts out until after I left in another five minutes. Needless to say a lot of us made fun of Garrett for that incident. A brand new employee, who clearly was inept and made me wonder why I hired him in the first place, crashed into the glass wall separating our department and the rest of the office. It was impossible not to laugh though I managed to hold it in for a few minutes before I ran out of the building to laugh my ass off. His oily face left a nice Han Solo carbonite print on the glass. Second story. At a previous company, a rather rotund co-worker shat himself and did not realize it. Somehow the outside back of his jeans was covered in a sage. He went to lunch with other co-workers and sat in someone's car with a shitty ass. No one said anything. I was new at the job. I'm sitting next to this guy, but I mostly keep to myself because I don't know anyone much yet. The guy is sitting in his chair and leans down to open a drawer in his desk. As he does, he sneezes and in doing so slams his head into the desk. I didn't know how to react. This was one of the first interactions I had with the guy, but it was too ridiculous not to react. I was too shocked to even laugh about it then. I just said, did you seriously just do that? It was like the dumbest thing I had ever witnessed, and I was thinking, these are the people I'm going to be working with? He just laughs it off and says, ha, huh, yeah. I used to work for my father, and he was very loyal to his second in command, who was the most inept person I've ever met. When he was going through a terrible divorce, he was living out of his office for like a month, as he thought his soon-to-be ex-wife was staying at his house. Come to find out a little while later that his wife actually moved out of his house right after he moved into his office, and it took him a month to realize that his house was vacant and that he was living out of his office, sleeping in a sleeping bag on the floor for absolutely no reason at all. I worked in a small office, at most six to eight people at a time and we did mainly programming slash website design slash graphic design work. One day, a bunch of us discovered the 2048 game and started playing. 
We got really competitive, and a lot of us would play, and try to get the highest score, screenshot it and write it on the glass door with the first two letters of our name. Somehow, by the end of the month the entire glass door was filled with numbers and initials, but everyone was too lazy to clean it up. We had a fair few people slash clients slash friends come over and everyone asked about the numbers and letters. We'd make up a different story each time. It's the master key. It unlocks any security system at all time. It's the hexadecimal code of a new AI we wrote that always beats a human being in Candy Crush. The numbers and letters are part of an initiation code to a secret hackers club. It was a funny inside joke. Work at a funeral home. Was out on a transfer and this family kept delaying us. We're ready. No, we're not. Over and over again. So finally we're outside with the stretcher. This one relative jumps full speed on the stretcher. My coworker was looking away and it knocks out of his hands. The lady and the body start rolling towards the street. About 20 people gasp and I see my coworker dive before they hit the street. The family let us go right after that. I used to work as a janitor in a student union at a public university to pay for tuition. Because it was a public university, the public is welcome in any of our facilities, so long as they don't cause any trouble. Of course, this meant that the homeless frequented the student union. One night, I go to clean the downstairs bathroom. There's a homeless man in there with what looked like a pretty bad infection in his mouth and gums. He is literally pulling teeth and bits of gums out and throwing them in the sink. There is blood everywhere. He leaves, but I'm tasked with cleaning it up and we have only wrist-length gloves and no protective gear. The sinks also have those drains with the little holes in them, so I had to pick up all the bits of teeth and gums by hand and clean up all the blood on the mirrors and floor. Yuck! I used to work at a boarding house for dogs. It was next door to a vet clinic, and one of the vet techs, a 40-something soccer mom, was always s to us. We were just a bunch of teens working minimum wage, and we weren't afraid to trade insults with her if she started something. We shared an area behind the strip center, which was shaped like an owl, that was a break area for the vets and a potty spot for the dogs. We take them out on leashes, let them do their business, and take them back in. On this particular day, one of my female co-workers took a white French bulldog out. This particular dog had to eat a very specific diet. I had another dog, so did the other two people working that evening. The three of us were shooting the S and the girl with the Frenchie was off to the side, on the phone. Soccer mom comes out and almost immediately starts insulting the girl with the bulldog, saying she was dressed like AS, etc. She probably chose her because she was isolated from the rest of us. The three of us who were talking just hear bickering, and bickering, and then a really loud squish, followed by a scream of horror. We turned around and the soccer mom is covered in 100% liquid S. The feeders had given the little Frenchie the wrong food. The old beast started throwing up all over herself, and our coworker just took the dog in to be cleaned off like nothing happened. Teaching first grade, had a sweet troublemaker named Jackson. Cute kid, but accident prone and almost always in trouble. One day Jackson has an accident in his pants. It happens, he kids are only six and we keep a supply of emergency clothes for just this type of situation. So I get the child some clean clothes and take him to the bathroom, where he goes in and changes. Unfortunately for everyone, our principal decides to have a fire drill right in the midst of Jackson's change of garments. To his credit, Jackson knew what to do during a fire drill and he proceeded to do it at full speed. You guessed it, a naked boy ran streaking through the hallways in a very determined effort to get out the door. I managed to catch him before he got too far, shoved him in the office with the principal and the clean clothes, then got my class out safely. Jackson graduated high school last year and we still laugh about the fire drill. NYC Construction had a 16-foot truck back into the loading dock with a load of concrete form panels we had to unload. Easy enough, just use a power jack and it's a half-hour task. The bed of the truck was about 4 inches higher than the edge of the dock, still not an issue. One of the carpenters tells the 4 month on apprentice to go tell the driver to lower the truck. Which on larger trucks they can do, but a small flatbed isn't going to have hydraulics. So after the apprentice comes back with a look of defeat on his face I tell him to go up to the tool shanty and get the dock razor. Half an hour later he calls the first carpenter saying he can't find it, carpenter tells him to go find the foreman and ask him what he did with the dock razor. The store manager got into a play fight with one of the employees. He had the employee in a headlock, the employee pushed forward to try to get the guy to let go, they backed into the office, and proceeded to break a shelf. It wasn't busy so me and the other two guys who were in the kitchen were laughing our asses off. The manager was like 54 and the employee was in his mid-twenties. The manager was a hard ass about working, but he knew how to fuck around too. The employee always liked to screw with the store manager endlessly. It was always a good time. Another one at my work. Mind you work in an office with professional people. 
Walk into the men's bathroom. I go to pinch a loaf, open the stall door, and there's literally shit everywhere. I mean this guy must have had the shivering squirts really bad because most of it didn't make it in the toilet. It was on the toilet seat, on the toilet flusher, on the wall, on the floor. I was disgusted but also found it hilarious. I felt really sorry for the cleaning people. Anyway it was kind of an inside joke in the office slash which hunt to find the culprit. Our CEO decided that he was sick of being bothered by people asking him how the company should be run so they should all go ask people under him. He made this announcement by memo distributed to the entire company titled Respect the Chain of Command. The title was the only place that was spelled out, the body of the memo shortened it to cock. So we got a memo filled with such gems as you must respect the cock. Failure to respect the cock is a termination offense. Seriously, this one page memo had the phrase respect the cock like 10 times in it. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.